On, on February 14, 2017, Russian jets buzzed a couple of your uh, naval, ca naval carriers. This happened also, again, recently, and it's happened multiple times. What, what would it take for the U.S. or NATO to act to intercept one of these Russian, Russian fighter jets instead of it just being an agitation that's happening off the coast of Sweden and all these other places and now buzzing our ships? What would it take? Well, uh, I'll tell you, all it would take is that, that uh, any of those forces, whether it's a small ship or a plane or whatever, and, and we've seen a lot of all of it, uh, you know, those commanders are equipped in every respect to understand whether there's really hostile intent or not, uh, whether they have the ability to you know, shoot, uh, uh, you know, strike the, uh, the ship, and uh, then they have the authority to, to defend themselves. And so in each one of those cases, the first calls I make are to the commanding officers. And hey, did you have everything you needed did you ever feel threatened? Did you ever feel like the situation was getting away from you? And uh, consistently, the answer to those is, hey, I had everything I needed. I had all the systems uh, to defend myself. I had all the authorities I needed. I had all the intelligence that was going to uh, allow me to assess the situation. And it goes to just the tremendous amount of responsibility and trust that we place in those commanding officers. Those men and women in command are making split-second decisions. And uh, so far, I couldn't be more proud of the way that they're handling themselves. But the, but the pictures, like for the uh, February 14th incident that have emerged, it shows the Russian jets only 100 feet, yeah. basically, from, from the ships. Right. How do they interpret that there's no hostile intention? Well, a lot of those cues that you get are uh, you know, probably not something we can talk about here. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> But you know, they've got a, a very good understanding of what those aircraft have on board. You know, are they targeting? You know, those sorts of things. And then, you know, what you really worry about, though, Joe, in those sorts of cases, as you said, it's very close, and so it doesn't take a lot of pilot error or anything like that. So you just have a mishap, and you know, there wasn't any intended uh, hostile action. But because things are close and people make mistakes, uh, you just worry about a miscalculation or a mishap at that point. How, when, when an incident like this happens, how long until you're actually notified or that you're notified that there's a ship or a sub right off the coast uh, of the U a Russian sub right off the coast yeah. of the U.S.? Is this like instantaneous? Is this like a matter of seconds that you're notified? How quickly? It sort of depends on the situation, uh, but from the time that we become aware of something like that, so that, that aircraft incident you talked about, we, be, we were instantly aware. You know, it's literally, you know, minutes type of time frame before I get notified. Mm -hmm. 